Well, when I was a, a young boy, I've got clear memories of like when I first went to the first football match, first training session, um, first game, first goal I saw. I just wonder if you had like clear memories yourself. Um, for me, obviously, women's football wasn't really on TV. Didn't have like social media when I was younger, and. My earliest memory, a vivid memory, was Ryan Giggs in the FA Cup. Yeah. Watching that on TV the, against uh, Arsenal. The big yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, So that was my biggest memories for me in terms of, okay, I love football, this is what I want to do. Yeah. Um, my room was a little bit different, so I didn't really have any interest in football. Um, okay. And then I went around my, my cousin's house, had a sleepover, and he had a game the next day. And I went to go and watch the game, and I was just on the side of the pitch. Had a kick around at school, stuff like that. But um, and I was just shooting into a goal, and somebody got injured. They told me to come on. And I think <laughs> I think I scored five that day, um, and that was it. As much as I liked it, you know, I enjoyed yeah. it. It was my uncle. He was a hardcore Leicester fan as well. Okay. And he said, like, look, you got to go for this. Like, you're good. And I was only five or six at the time. In the background, my love for football, watching games. So for me. The one that sticks out for most would be Liverpool uh, Champions League final, three for AC Milan, and then after that, my love just, it just oh, took wow. off. Oh wow! Yeah, that, to be fair, that is a good game. It's yeah. enough to turn anyone to like football. That's it. Fair. That's it. I was I was already into it, but that was a game I thought. Do you know what? The emotions that I had just watching the game, I thought I want a bit of that. Mm. Um, and then yeah, the academy kind of took off from there and just continued. I'd like to think now, if I was. Our oh, age when we first started, that girls especially have someone now that they are more exposed to women's football rather than me going. I remember like men, like male football yeah, yeah. or whatever. But they've they got like a clear role model now. Yeah. You always try and put yourself in a category that you can see and can relate to. Yeah. So you know, young girls are putting on the TV and watching an FA Cup game. Um, I know, obviously not the minute of COVID, but the crowds were growing. Yeah. Um, Girls are going to think, hang on a minute, like there is actually a route for me. There yeah. is game time for me. And is that how you started? Did you have to go to the boys' team? To yeah, start? so I, similar to you, so I didn't really enjoy it. So obviously, Wales, rugby is like number one, like yeah. always has been. And I went along with my cousins to, they did training at the local YMCA. So that's all we had, like a community centre. And I thought, oh, I'm just gonna go. Well, my mum was like, you go in because you're doing my head in. I was about <laughs> five, I think at the time, six. Yeah. And yeah, and I just start, thought, I was just joined in. And they were, they were a bit uh, two years older than me. Wow. Yeah, so I just joined in and they realized quickly that I picked up quite a lot of the, the stuff. And yeah, I think I was five years old and I was just mucking in with, with the boys. And I was there from, so then I actually joined the boys team. So I was there from five until I was 12 years old. Um, and I played my first 11 side game when I was nine. Wow, so I played, proper throwing in the deep end. I, yeah, so I played two years above, yeah. And then I remember going to like, I don't know whether you had it at Leicester. So we had used to have like Cardiff City days where Cardiff City would put on like a tournament yeah, 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 for yeah, yeah. local kids. And I remember winning player of the tournament and the guy came up to me and wanted to sign me for the boys' academy for Cardiff City. And I was like, I, I, I can't because there's no pathway for was me. Was a rolling on that at the time? Yeah, you, so you, you were allowed to sign up. If you were over, as soon as you, you hit 12 years old, you had to stop playing for a boys' team. And then I stopped playing football. Because there was no pathway yeah, at all, so, you just give up on it. And... Yeah, so I just stopped, just played at school because I think my teachers, they were really good to me. They knew that. I was really, like, I just was really good at it. It was kind of, and I was quite misbehaving as a child, so they found that was like quite a good Yeah, get you outside. Focus, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, and then I got a phone call or an email from Cardiff City Women, um, and they contacted me when I was 16. And that's, I went and had a trial. Yeah, never looked so back. So there's a gap from like 12 all the way to 16 yeah, where you wasn't doing it competitive? Not competitive football, no. Wow. So yeah, that's a large chunk of obviously like your development if you like. Yeah, easy. not four years. It's mad because in met in boys football you've done really a year of that. I mean. Did you have like did you miss a lot of last season? Yeah, so obviously in like within football you always have injuries and stuff and last year I tore my hamstring. Um only the 14 centimetres. Um we played Everton on the Sunday 
and it got to the 90 second minute, played all the game, we were winning. They, I'm gonna blame the strikers. They, def they, failed, to, they failed to keep it in the corner. The girl hit the channel, I run, and as I run, I just straight away, and I was just like. Yeah, certain injuries you just know. Yeah, I was like, That's what I've always found, like, kind of leaning on to what we're saying about tough times. I think that starts bang at that moment because you know when you get injured, you're like, yeah, I might be all right next game. I, you know, I might get through it. When you get that big bang or that yeah. big pull, you just know that you're gonna have a rocky road. Yeah. Um, I had the same as a kid. So when I was, I came for the Leicester Academy. I had it twice actually. One of the times I, I felt that big bang in my knee, and you, you just know, like I say, I was only a kid at the time, 15, 16. Pretty standard injury in terms yeah. of your knee injury. It's a cartilage injury, which should okay. have been four to six weeks. It ended up being a year. How? Nobody, no answers for me. I've seen, wow. um, I've seen surgeons, I've seen specialists, and I've actually seen somebody that told me that I should probably call it a day because of my wow. age. Yeah. Um, it wasn't a significant injury that would make it call it a day yeah. because of my age and because of everything I've been through, I sat down in there with, with the specialist and he said, Do you know, if I was you, I'd, I'd call it a day. Um, wow. But yeah, touch wood, right. I've, been, I've been lucky on that side. My, my toughest times would have been actually on the pitch, but. I think yeah. when it's like that, you don't mind. You was in the moment for it to be like that. Yeah. You know, the Wembley penalty miss. Um, yeah. We can bring it up, don't worry, everyone does. <laughs> <laughs> but I think like, you probably back me up on this, but all these times you go through these hard times, round the corner something comes even better and then you think, yeah. wow. I you know, it's, 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 it's kind of written, so it's, yeah. it's, it's good. Oh, we got to the semi-final of the FA Cup. Our run was unbelievable. Like, you could not, I've written an easier run and we were on top. We had two penalties, I think, during the game. Um, and it, we missed one, scored one, then they scored just after. And it was like this would have been our greatest opportunity to get to a final. And we wanted to get to a final, that would have been the best chance, and we just couldn't. If we had been there for a month, we could not have put it away. Yeah. Like, it was just one of those games. Those and games yeah. For us, I think it took us a while, especially as a team, to get over that. Um, and it kind of affected our results Like after that. We weren't it's great. the same as us, after the Wembley. You yeah. know, we, we was, the trajectory was just literally just straight up. Yeah. There was no blips, really. You know, a couple of defeats along the season. but And then you have that high, and then it doesn't quite work out. And the low is lower than yeah. you can imagine. You know, yeah. that, that comeback's difficult. It, it, it's the same as we had it with Wales. We, we nearly qualified for the World Cup. Yeah. We lost to England 3 0. Um, and we could have actually qualified if we got one point. And we've never got that far before ever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for me, I didn't want to go back to football. Like, that was, I, I was literally like, part of it, I was like grieving. Yeah. I was like, I hate it. As much as I love my job, I just cannot stand the sight of or the thought of playing football again because I didn't want to be that heartbroken again. Yeah, yeah. And that's probably the same as what you experienced in the playoffs. Wembley, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the saviour for me that summer was I got married. Yeah. So it put a bit of perspective on what football was. Um, yeah. I had Vegas booked way before we even got to the playoffs. And then obviously we, we got to the playoffs, we got to the final. So three days after the playoff final, it was my stag do. So that five or six days, transform me as well because before that I was low and you can imagine you know I thought yeah. like football as well yeah. as, as cool it is I don't want yeah. anything to do with it and I went Vegas with my mates and they ripped the living day life out of me but that's uh, what you want because it's that's normal that's what I needed it, it became yeah normal what had happened and that was it yeah I came straight back in because you're Vegas and, and getting married are quite good distractions to be fair if I could have asked for two they, they would have <laughs> and that order as well So what age was you at Cardiff when you become captain? Um, so we got, rare, I would have been about 18, I reckon, 19. I got had a few offers, so I got an offer from Bristol City to go and play for them. Um, but in the same time, I got named captain. Um, I don't know whether it was a ploy for me to stay. Um, Did it work? Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I, I, I just thought, I'd been at the club, they saw, they invested a lot of time and yeah. energy in, in me and I thought, you know, this is a fantastic opportunity to put one on my CV and, you know, because we got relegated, I wanted to get promoted. I wanted to be the captain that got them promoted. Um, and yeah, we did, so I was quite young, I was 19 years old and there was definitely there was older players there that was, you know, older than me, but they obviously saw something that 
in, in you that Obviously he's carried over now and he was, yeah. he read in the captain um, and yeah. read him. So, so I was here for a year and a half um, and then I remember Kelly brought me in. We were just about to play Brighton in a pre-season friendly. The day before the game she pulls me into the this like little storm thing. It was like the kit was like everywhere and she's like, oh I you know, I wanted didn't want to make a big thing of it because I know what you like. I was like, alright, okay, she I you know, I named you captain. And at first I thought, are you taking the, the you know, are you taking the mick? And she was like, no. I was like, I just need a second at a minute. They're like it was really nice and felt quite emotional because someone had trusted me to yeah, take yeah. this role. Yeah. And I'd like to think I've grown into it. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think it's one of them things you, you have to grow yeah. into. I don't feel like the first couple of years. When did you get named captain? Um, two, three years ago. Two years ago, yeah. so I've been two full seasons now. Uh, but the year before that, I was kind of vice captain. Uh, it was something that I knew I wanted to do. Uh, through my youth age groups, I'd always captain Leicester, so yeah. I knew it was something I wanted to do. And uh, mine was kind of thrown upon me. I remember we had a media day here, um, we had the team photo. Yeah. The owner had come over for the team photo, um, and Jose Gomez at the time says, um, "Come over here, speak to the owner, because um, uh, you're my captain this year." Um, just dropped in. So you didn't have time to even like process it. it was so, just yeah, like, okay. I was, yeah, literally. <laughs> okay, went over, shook the owner's hand, and kind of went home and thought, "Does he mean like for the season?" Or, but yeah, I think it's something you grow into because yeah. it comes with a lot of responsibility, as yeah. you'll know. Uh, and you don't want to, just because you've got the armband now, then change the person. You don't want to be like, right, you do this, you do that. I kind yeah. of want to be natural with it. I think I tried to be who other people wanted me to be at first. Um, so I, this year I've definitely, you can tell, I think, uh, in terms of other people can probably realise I'm now my own yeah, you, captain. Yeah, that's it. Whereas last year it was like, can you do this? Oh yeah, yeah, no problem. Can you do that? Oh yeah. I'll try and please everyone, but mm -hmm. I just thought, you know, that's not why they probably picked me because they probably picked me because whatever you've done before. Yeah, I went against the grain, or I disagreed with certain things, or I challenged people in different ways. So obviously, you've had an interesting journey. Um, you spoke about playing in the men's team. Um, you went to Cardiff, and then you've ended up at Reading now. Obviously, it's a very good standard. You know, you're playing against all the best teams um, in the women's league, but. What would you say is the difference from them early days to now uh, within the standard? Um, so obviously standard and facilities have changed massively since I've been involved. Um, when I was at Cardiff it was all council pitches. We'd have to do a recce prior, there'd be dogs, mess everywhere, cans beer, of, of beer, bottles from the night before, yeah. barbecue, um, leftovers. So for us, that's what we had access to. We didn't have any, any money. We were a non-profit organization. We had to pay to play. So our sign, when you get say a signing on fee, we would pay the signing on fee. We wouldn't get the signing on fee. And um, we'd have to pay 50 pounds to play, 50, and then 120 pounds for kit. Um, yeah, and then, so we'd have to train. In the summer, we would train on the council pitches, six to half seven, because obviously daylight. And then we trained in a school on the AstroTurf. Uh, because they had access to floodlights, um, but it wasn't great. No change rooms, no toilets, nothing. So if you drunk a lot of water in that training session, <laughs> you, you've had it. Um, um, and now obviously at, at Reading, um, I mean, it's all right here, it's, it's not too bad. Um, but no, it's, it's amazing. And for us to play at the stadium as well, it's, it's, it just shows for me the ambition of the club that they want to have the men and women's team looked in the same Yeah, it's definitely in the, going in the right direction. Yeah. Um, I know Reading women's team um, and Reading in general as a club have got big ambitions. Yeah. Uh, you know, the owner, everybody knows whenever I speak about the owner, he is, um, he's got <laughs> crazy ambitions, yeah. but when he's, he's doing it for the men's team, the women's team, the academy, uh, the youth, it, it gives this club and this, uh, this town an unbelievable chance. For us it's taken a long while, but in terms of women's football, but we're just thankful that the club have ambitions for the women's team as well as the men's team. So, so obviously we've got a little daughter, five years old. Would you say now your perspective on women's football has changed from when you probably would have been would have seen it before to what it is now? 
for your daughter yeah. as well being involved? A million times over. Um, you know, in all fairness, the only exposure women's football really had was Bend It Like Beckham. Great film, by the way. Unbelievable <laughs> film, but that would have been the only time I'd probably turn on the TV and see women's yeah. football. Um, and even in that, they don't portray it probably right because the standard isn't as good as yeah. it, it probably is out there. Um, but nowadays, you know, you, you can turn on the TV and you can watch a, a game of women's yeah. football. You can hear about um, and see a lot of advertisement for the FA Cup. Obviously, yeah. you said yourself, you went on the cup run last year. Yeah. That was everywhere to be seen. Um, and, and with a daughter, that's also going to interest her as well. You know, when you can see these things um, and when she watches a lot of football anyway with myself, then to turn on the TV and see little girls like herself and, and yeah. older women playing football, she's probably going to take more interest in it now. So, yeah, she's uh, anything I do, she does. So, she loves football, she loves boxing. Wow. Yeah. On that side, I think my perspective has changed because the standard's good first and foremost. Yeah. But on top of that, it's getting global exposure, which not just me, for everybody watching, is going to change what they think and how far they believe the game can go. And you, I think if your daughter does play football, she'll probably get the multi-million pound deals that we've all paid, you know, paid the way for her to get, yeah. That's it, I hope so, <laughs> I hope so. She'll be working in the garden, so. We've been slogging away, so she'll get that. Yeah, she'll meet the rewards. Yes. <laughs>